guys, it's your girl Aisha aka Geek XX Chic, and I'm back with a review to The Flash Season 5, the premiere, which is finally here. It was called Nora. Season 5, you guys. I'm a little bit, it still seems weird to say that. So many of my shows, I can't believe that we're just advancing so much. Walking Dead Season 9, this Season 5. Mind blowing. Um, so this episode was called Nora. And aptly so, we ended off season four with Nora finally admitting who she was. Most of us already kind of guessed who she was very early in the season, but we got that confirmation in the finale, seeing her run up right beside her dad, seeing the mixture. Actually, we knew, I knew from, I think it was, I can't remember the actual episode number, but whatever episode where Nora hid from meeting her mother, and when she ran away, we saw that she had the gold and purple lightning, which is both Barry and Iris's lightning. So that's when I was like, okay, that's definitely their daughter. But we got that confirmation in the finale and we just kind of swooped right in. I see that we didn't go with the time jump this, uh, this season premiere. We're literally picking up right where we ended in season five, which I'm okay with. I'm actually, or yeah, I'm okay with that. I don't really want it. There wouldn't have been much sense, I think, in jumping ahead and having Nora have been there for weeks or months at a time already, especially since there's that big overarching issue of her potentially ruining the timeline and causing issues the way that we've seen Barry do multiple times. So let's just jump into this episode then. Uh, I've got some notes here. <laughs> I guess let's talk about the relationships because I feel like since this episode really was very Nora-centric, they really focused on her relationship or her interactions with Barry versus Iris. And when we saw the, the previews and all the, the trailers earlier, you know, this year before the season aired, we saw right off the bat that, and even last season, we saw that Nora was making an effort to meet the members of Team Flash and obviously just kind of became stupid happy whenever she was around Barry, but avoided Iris like the plague. And everyone had different theories about why that could be. And in this episode, it almost seemed like, you know, there was, it was just like, maybe she just didn't like Iris, so they didn't get along. But we see that Nora kind of had this daddy worship. I kind of picked up on that immediately, right? It was kind of like there was nothing that Barry could could do that was wrong. Everything he did was put up on this super high pedestal. Of, oh, you could do this. Oh, I, I could never quite do that. Oh, I just, I, you could do all these things and I could never even came close. And oh my God, you know what I mean? Like, of course, people typically love their parents. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I love my parents and I think they're amazing, but like, they're not that amazing. <laughs> Typically, when you've, you know, grown up with your parents and you lived, them, you lived with them and you've grown up with, I mean, you love them, of course, but you know they're imperfect. And while you definitely probably revere them to a certain level in your head, you don't really kind of put them on this pedestal, right? They, as you get older, you start to recognize that they're just like you, that they're human. But Nora, when it comes to Barry, you could just see it in the wide-eyed glare she'd give him every time she was with him. Like, she just thinks he's infallible and there's just nothing he can do wrong. And the fact that she was so eager to spend every moment with him. And I was like, this seems very strange because I understand that the, the dynamics between mothers and daughters can be very strained. I mean, clearly we already know that Iris had a strained relationship with her mother, but we all know that Iris by nature is a very nurturing, kind, loving, supportive person, right? So I just couldn't see how Nora would have gotten anything less than that from Iris. So I was like, why is this happening? But we, we discover that it's because of the article, which I think is kind of funny that Barry's like, what happens? What do you mean I wasn't around? It's like, Barry, did we forget about season one? But I guess, I guess that it's warranted because of course, Flashpoint happened. And so I don't think Barry's I'm trying to think if we saw the article. The article changed, right? After Barry came back from Flashpoint, the article changed. And I don't think he ever went to check the article again since that all happened, right? So um, I, I guess there was reasons why he would think that maybe that article was no longer true, but it looks like he's reset enough things. And I think that's why they had made sure to have Wally make that point about how there are soft things in history that happen that if you massage a few things, it will still have the same outcome. So. Even though Flashpoint changed a lot of things, it apparently didn't, it was soft enough that it didn't change the, like that Barry was able to, I guess, recreate enough things to put the timeline back to what Nora grew up with, which is Barry disappearing in the future. So I don't know how to feel about that. Like I'm not mad at it because I always thought it would never kind of dealt with that whole disappearance, right? I mean, the only thing that that article really ever gave us uh, in season one was the knowledge that Iris and Barry were gonna get married, which of course we knew in season one, that's what was a big reveal for Barry because 
he thought he was gonna be friend zoned forever. It's nice that the show is kind of remembering that in season one there was this thing that was kind of huge and it never really got dealt with. And I think that that's another really good testament to the new writers on this show is that I feel like they're really good at looking at full storylines and full story arcs and making sure that things actually connect and make sense. That's one thing I absolutely loved about season four is that it was the most coherent season as far as episodes and arc and plot that I think that the show's ever had. And I see if they're doing that here now in season five, picking up some of that stuff, because in my opinion, the first half of season one was the first, was like the best season, <laughs> the best part of the Flash show up until season four. So if they're going back to that, kudos, great, love it. Let's flesh this out and actually figure out how and if we can change that timeline or if we should, right? Because we still don't know why Barry disappeared. So anyway, back to Nora's dad worship. It makes so much more sense now that the fact that Barry was basically gone before she could remember him is why now she's just like, you know, we see everything she said about seeing her dad and learning about him basically through the museum, the Flash Museum, and anything that would have been historically there about him. So like, of course, a museum never really necessarily enshrines the worst of a person. It typically brings that, especially someone who's considered a hero, they're always gonna put Barry's best moments and the most amazing things about Barry up there. So of course it's kind of given Nora this superficially perfect viewpoint of who her father was. Not to mention, I can't think that Iris did anything other than describe Barry as one of the best people ever, because she does do that. She gushes about Barry all the time to people who, who know him or don't know him. So it's interesting because now it kind of makes things make a little bit more sense. I mean, this is only episode one, so we don't know if there's more to the Iris and Nora thing, but it kind of makes more sense that she's kind of, I don't think it's so much that she's resisting Iris, which is kind of what we, kind of got the feel from, I think, from the trailers. I think it's more of her just unfortunately naturally taking Iris for granted. That happens a lot with the parent that we've got, you know, if, if even if you only have one parent, if they're always there, and especially if they're reliable and constants in our life, like as humans, we have a bad, re a bad uh, habit of taking th the constants in our life for granted. And I think it's just a matter of Nora just thinking, well, my mom's always been there. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Iris has always been there. Mom's always been there. She loves me. She's great. Daddy, right? And I think that's what we're just getting right now is her just being so thrilled at being able to interact with her father, this man, again, that she's built up in her head to be this perfect thing. So it makes a lot more sense to me that this is the case. And again, there may be more to it. And I feel like as the season goes on, we're probably going to see some other things. I mean, no mother-daughter or any parent-child relationship's absolutely perfect. There's always, you got two imperfect people. So there's gonna be some flaws. I would, I would venture to guess that Iris might've been maybe a little overbearing because again, with her not having that relationship with her mother, I could see her wanting so much for her and Nora to have that, that bond and that connection she wasn't able to have with her mother. Conversely, it could also be that once Iris loses Barry, because this would be the second time that Barry disappears, right? The first time he went to the Speed Force in season three, and then here he disappears again. I can see her maybe becoming a little bitter and maybe even a little clingy when it comes to her daughter. When we hear Nora say to that she got the name Excess from her mom, that she basically labeled Nora and her actions and the way she did things as excessive, Obviously, Nora, you could tell by her facial expression that she took that as a negative. And Iris may not have necessarily meant it that way, but if we're thinking about the fact that, let's put ourselves in the future. Here's Iris, Barry's gone again, it's extended. It's not like the first time we went to the Speed Force, or I mean, again, we don't know that Barry went to the Speed Force in the future, but let's assume it's something like that. Barry's gone again, she doesn't know if he's ever coming back. Now all she's got left of her family, all she's got left of him, is Nora, and Nora turns out to be a speedster. And I'm thinking, all Iris is thinking is, oh God, not again. Oh God, not again. Here's another speedster who's gonna get addicted to being this hero and, and being, you know, in the speed force and doing all these things. And maybe one day she's gonna leave me too the way that Barry did. Like, I think that's a very realistic fear for Iris. And maybe by her labeling her as excess, it might've been her subconscious way of trying to maybe discourage Nora from being so much like Barry, especially since she already kind of was. You know, she's a CSI, she's nerdy, she's awkward, she's hyper. Like these are all the things we really saw well, the most in season one, Barry. So I could totally see Iris just thinking, maybe if I discourage her from being so much like Barry, 
she won't fall into the same traps or put herself in the same danger. Because yes, of course she lived with it when Barry was doing it and her brother, but it's a very different relationship when it's your actual child. Like all a parent, a healthy parent typically wants is for their child to be safe at all costs. So maybe that could have been something that if Nora picked up the fact that, that her mom didn't really want her to be like her dad, but not for the reasons that Nora thinks, you know, if Nora's again, hero worshiped her father and her mom's the one telling her, don't be so much like your dad. Nora could definitely take that as, a, oh, but I am like my dad and you don't like it. So we're gonna have a problem or, you know, we're gonna have this distance because he's the one who's gonna understand me or he's the one who would understand me and you don't. And also there is the big gap of Iris being human and Nora being a meta and it shouldn't be a big deal, but I can see how that could definitely be a bit of a, a rift between them because Iris can't fully, well, she can in the sense that she was a speedster for like 48 hours, but overall, she really can't relate to what it would be like in certain ways, the way that Barry could. So there could be a lot of reasons why that their relationship isn't great or seemingly great, but I'm really hoping it is more the former reason that I mentioned where she's just, I just really hope it's more a case of her just gorging on her father that she's never ever been around before. And at some point, she'll probably get to the point she's like, okay, mom, <laughs> you're still pretty awesome. The best thing that Iris can really do is kind of hang back and wait for Nora to come to her, I think at this point. That's pretty much, the majority of the episode really kind of centered around those relationships. We have the new baddie who just showed up and he makes lightning bolts, black lightning bolts. His face is covered. His eyes look real jacked up. He's wearing a Mortal Kombat hood. Those of you out there who are comic book fiends who know this kind of stuff, you probably already have an idea of who he is. If you could let me know who you think it is below, I'd really appreciate it but he seems to have an issue with metas. And I'm wondering if he would have always been around or maybe if this is some kind of causal effect of Nora being here, because we all know that there's going to be something. As much as Barry tried to poo-poo it away at the end of the episode, we know there's going to be a negative repercussion of Nora being here. That's just the way it goes. So what that is, and maybe it is this guy, Maybe he came through the speed force with her, or maybe he came to this time period because of her. He has red lightning, and it seems like he has some kind of kinetic energy or uh, I don't know how to explain it. Like he charged that lightning bolt. So I don't know if he can actually throw it or what, but well, I guess we'll learn more as the season goes forward. We basically had a very light flyover of the other members of Team Flash, which is why I didn't really talk about them. You know, Cisco mentioned, <laughs> briefly mentioned the fact that he's still dealing with his breakup from Gypsy. Seemed kind of random, but I was fine with it because hungover Cisco's funny. But I really hope that's not gonna be a pattern for this season. I want Cisco to have something that's not just a romance this season. I wanna see him delve more into being Vibe and potentially looking into the kind of powers that even Reverb had and how he could potentially channel them and improve himself. And we found out that Caitlin's dad was not dead, which I called during the episode. And Ralph didn't really have anything to do because while he was there, and clearly we didn't have the budget for both of them to be in the episode, so he's going back to Legends, unsurprisingly. He's not part of Team Flash cast anymore, but it was nice to see him, and I hope he, he does get a chance to come over more often than not. But other than that, I think the only thing that I'm predicting at the moment is, like I said during the reaction, I'm not sure how much I trust Nora. I don't think there's any ill intent there, but I do believe she's still keeping a lot to herself. She obviously did not tell Barry that her, her real plan for coming to the past was to save him or to stop him from disappearing, which of course could have a lot of negative effects. But I think there's more. There's just something about Nora that tells me she's, she's just holding on to something a little bit more and I don't fully trust her because she hasn't been fully honest so far. But hopefully whatever she's hiding will not go on for all the whole season. I'm hoping it'll all come out fairly quickly before she spills all the future secrets. So good episode though. I think it was a great introduction. I'm glad we spent that time with Nora because I think it's gonna allow us more time to focus on the plot as whatever it is throughout the rest of the season without having to do too much of delving into mining who Nora is. What did you guys think of this episode? How do you feel about Nora? How do you feel about this whole relationship she's got with Nora, uh, with uh, Iris versus her dad? How do you feel about the whole Caitlyn storyline? Do you even care? Please leave your comments below. You know, I love reading them and getting involved in that conversation with you guys. And if you like this video, guys, please click like. And if you wanna see more from this geeky face, please click subscribe. Until next time, see ya.